hey guys hey guys welcome back to my channel so i basically wanted to do another kind of like lock discussion video seems like you guys really like that and i really love how like everybody's been interacting with these videos and it's so cool hearing other people's experiences and like what they think about the topics of discussion so excited because my two-year anniversary is coming up i'm about to get my retie at the end of this week i'm going to be dropping another video on that but yeah we're going to talk about misconceptions that people have about if you transition to having locks how it will alter your life negatively how people think that we're so limited with having locks when really after these two years me seeing what i can do with my hairstyle and it just being my hair i found out how not limited we are and i feel more limitless compared to when i was a loose natural and we're basically going to talk about that today look this is a braid braid out slash bantu knot hairstyle that i did it was like about a, like days ago days ago that's the first thing we're going to talk about we're going to talk about versatility all those people that are just like oh you know when you lock your hair you're gonna get bored you're not gonna be able to do a whole bunch of stuff there's a lot of versatile things that you can do with locks that people do not know about and there's things that you can do with locks versus being a loose natural or versus having a perm or any type of regular hair type that you have that are better when you do it with locks, if that makes sense. So here are a list of things that you could basically do when you have locks that people don't really necessarily know about, or they have assumptions that you can't really do. You could still put wigs on. <laughs> you could still do your hair. And when I say color your hair, you could dye your hair blonde, you could dye your hair whatever color that you want. They say it's best to go light before going dark because it'll be easier when it comes to like dyeing and stuff like that. But everything that applies to when you dye your hair when you're a loose natural or having a perm or any type of hair type still applies to when you have locks. You still have to make sure you moisturize your hair and hydrate your locks because it will change the hair texture. So it's not really much of a difference. Your hair is gonna last longer, personally, I believe so. If your hair is locked and you get it dyed, it's less riskier because your hair is in a protective hairstyle 24 seven. You're not gonna be manipulating it really. You're not gonna be straightening your hair with dyed hair or anything like that. So I feel personally, it's better to dye your hair with locks versus not having locks. Before I started my journey, you guys could tell from my tips, but I dyed my tips, I dyed my hair brown because my loctician, that I started off with, she was like, if you wanna dye your hair, make sure you dye your hair before we get started. Because during the process of maturing, your hair is gonna be dry and it's not gonna have like moisture and stuff like that because that's part of the locking process. So you may as well do it before, take care of your hair as best as you can and then get it locked, which is what I did. My tips are grown out. And that's the thing about when you get locks, you could dye your hair. You don't necessarily have to dye your whole head for say, if I do it, that's what I wanna do on the tips. You could cut it off. That's another thing that you could do that people don't really <laughs> realize that you could actually do with regular hair, also with locks. I didn't know this until maybe like, I had an idea, but for some reason in my brain, I thought people were like just starting over again. But I had a patient one day and her hair was so long and I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know how it would be to have long hair like that. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. And then she was just like, well, what do you expect to do when your hair gets long? She was just like, well, you could just cut it. Like cut it. Like I could cut it into a bob because what I was scared about was my hair unraveling and stuff like that. And she was just like, yeah, my hair, I've grown my hair from waist length to chopping it short to waist length to chopping it short throughout her lifelong duration of having locks, which was really a long time. There are steps and stuff that you have to do to maintain your locks, especially if you have, you have smaller ones, probably different for the bigger ones. So like you have to start braiding and banding again. But my loctician that I have now, she even told me that she cut her hair before. She just had to braid and band for a little bit until those ends were mature. Yeah, you could cut your hair into bobs. You could cut your hair from waist length to shoulder length to bra strap length and then just keep growing it out and cut it whenever you feel the need to do it. Something that people kind of look forward to like during the summer, doing protective hairstyles and like, you know, getting really long braids, getting really long natural hair community, black girl community, when it comes to getting braids, protective hairstyles, things that we usually do when we wanna get into the water and stuff like that. You could do that with locks too. 
You have to be careful, not apply too much tension and do it the right way and professionally do your research based off of the type of locks that you have, but you can still do it. Chloe and Hallie is a good example of that. They always have some type of extension onto their locks. Whether they do locks on top of their locks, whether they're wearing wigs, they figured it out. So it's possible. Another thing that people probably don't even really think about that much when it comes to versatility when you have locks. Let's say, you know, the reason why I started off small like this is because down the line, if I do get tired of having like sister locks and going through the retie process and da 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 da, you could always, and I, want, I still want locks, but I just want them to be more maintainable to the point where maybe I could do it myself. My reties won't be that bad. I've seen people combine their sister locks into micro locks or traditional locks, and that is possible too. You will have a whole different look, and you was, it would still be your hair and it's still going to be more maintainable you switch it up based off of what you're into at that point in your life let's say you do get bored let's say that you are tired of having locks let's say that you just want to have your loose natural or you want to start over that's okay you could cut all your hair out or you could find somebody professionally to take out and comb out your locks you could comb out sister locks people think that you can't comb sister locks out you can it's pricey but if you're willing to sacrifice that in order to have your hair still and start all over that's your decision but the thing that i noticed about if you were to start all over these girls that are starting all over cutting their hair or combing their locks out their hair is healthy regardless of how much hair they lost their hair is still healthy because they spent such a long time not adding a whole bunch of bad products for their hair, not really manipulating their hair, not applying heat to their hair because they had locks. So when they transitioned to being a natural again, their hair was strong. If you want to start all over again and get locks, you're going to have a strong foundation to start the locks again. One thing that even me that I thought, you know, in my past video that I posted that kind of a misconception about people with locks or having locked hair is that your hair wouldn't be as clean when really you washing your hair is the same as you washing your hair any type of way with protect whether it's in a protective hairstyle loose natural straight it's just a different technique to it and you have to cater it towards the hairstyle that you have there's a way that you wash your hair when you have protective braids in and you keep it in for a couple of months there's a way that you wash your hair when you have loose natural hair and you have to detangle it, especially like mine, I have 4C dense thick hair, you have to detangle it so that you could actually get the product everywhere and you're not knotted. And there's you, your hair is definitely gonna be clean if you take care of it the right way. You could get it professionally clean. I know lock salons that do everything. They do hair washes, apple cider vinegar rinses. There is a way to keep your hair clean. You just have to find the right resources do your research, ask questions, and do your part at home too. People think that you can't really... Having locks is a protective hairstyle, but you can still have a protective hairstyle with your hair being in a pr protective hairstyle, if that makes sense. Like, I can still do twists, I can still do braids, I could still roll my hair back, bun it up and stuff like that, so that my ends are still protected and my hair doesn't dry out quick and braid outs twist outs another reason why i transitioned to having locks is because in the beginning of my natural hair journey when i was doing braid outs and twist outs you know everything was fine and dandy but as my hair got longer for some reason i feel like your hair texture just changes your whole hair consistency kind of changes as it gets longer to the point where the things that you were able to do before they don't turn out the way they did in the beginning and that's what was happening and it was getting frustrating i was spending hours doing my hair washing detangling it styling just for the next day of me to take out all that hard work for it to not turn out the way i wanted it to turn out when now when i have locks i do braid outs i have twist outs i have curl sets and stuff like that and i don't have to worry about anything because i know it's about to be bomb to the little sprinkle on top is that I just add water, like just add water. I don't have to buy these twist creams. I was investing in twist creams before that was just like, oh, this is gonna make your hair more curly and defined and da 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 da. When it, there was no guarantee because I have a different hair texture compared to other people. What happened to other people didn't necessarily work for me. And that's just something that I had to learn through my natural hair journey too. 
Now, if you're in the professional environment, when it comes to presentation and professionalism and having locks, you can do it too. When it comes to being that girl with locks, you can do it too. Being a baddie, you can do it too. Don't let anybody tell you that having locks is not professional. They allow locks in the military now. All you have to do is be able to pull your hair back into a bun or it not be, you know, a certain part of your face or neck and stuff like that. And you are still conforming to the military uniform look as everybody else. Okay. You can have, you can be professional. You can be very attractive. You can be inspiration to a little girl with you having locks as your hair, main hairstyle. Assumptions of like not having locks is not neat and people not taking you seriously and everybody having these stereotypes about if you have locks. Let them let that be their problem, okay? That seems like a personal problem. Because you know exactly what type of person you are and what stereotypes you align with, what stereotypes you don't align with, because some people might resonate with some of those stereotypes. However, it's weird how people just look at you and they're just like, oh, she has locks. Bing, 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 bing. Five misconceptions, five stereotypes just pop up in their head and they just think that you are that person because of their whole life and what they've read and what they've been exposed to in social media. Like, no, I am whatever your name is. I align with my own characteristic traits and my own personal experiences. Just because I have locks doesn't mean I'm a Rastafarian. Like I do have Caribbean blood in me, but it's like I made my choice of getting this hairstyle based off of something completely, totally indifferent compared to what somebody else may think I made the hairstyle choice for. Don't let that bother you. Saying that you can't look neat and tapered, you can definitely look neat and tapered with locks. I've seen so many tutorials of slick back buns with locks and I didn't, I don't know how they made it work, but they did and they look bomb. Like it can happen. Even like, honestly, there are girls that have nice wigs that have, you know, sew-ins and stuff like that and braids. And when it gets to a point of time where you're not really taming it like you need to be, it can look unneat. It could look unprofessional. So that's kind of like, all across the board when it comes to having a hairstyle period. Any hairstyle can end up looking unprofessional and untamed and unpresentable. You just have to figure out how to do it with yourself, with having your locks, depending on how you want your locks to be. If you're not keeping up with it and maintaining it, it, it will probably end up like that, but it's your decision. Something that, I don't know if I'm the only one who really notices it, but, at first, when I first transitioned to getting locks, I kind of felt like I wasn't part of the natural hair community anymore. Be like being having locks was a whole community apart from being part of the natural hair community, if that makes sense. You, when you really think about it, like you're still wearing your natural hair. If anything, I feel like your hair is more in its natural state because you're just letting it do its thing and you're not adding products and stuff like that or heat and manipulating it as much. So if anything, people that have locks are more so in the natural community than other people may seem like they think that they're not. We have a community within the natural hair community, which is having locks. And in the lock community, there's other communities for the different types of locks that you have, micro locks, sister locks, traditional locks, form locks. I honestly don't even know why I brought that up and how that, no, it does correlate, it does correlate because having locks, you know, people don't really necessarily, when you're looking at natural hair community, they don't really talk about like having locks, but wearing locks is wearing your natural hair in a different state. Just like when you have natural hair and you do twists you do braid out and protective styles with braids, synthetic hair. They still say that you're part of the natural hair community, but I rarely see the natural hair community being associated with people that have locks. Like, what I'm trying to say is if you go through YouTube or if you go on a search en engine and you type in natural hair, there's a whole bunch of videos that pop up with people with loose natural hair, straight hair, 
braids, twists, etc. But you gonna keep scrolling. If so, you probably might not find it until a long time until you find somebody with dreads. We're part of the natural hair community. All these videos of like how to grow your natural hair longer and how to keep your natural hair healthy and da 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 da. Like there's no video that kind of explains. Like I've seen girls that have have had locks for a long time and they comb out their hair and their hair is longer and healthier compared to how it was before. That's a way that you could get long, natural, loose, natural hair too. Put in some locks, keep it in there for maybe a year or two, comb them out and voila. What I'm trying to say is, just to kind of wrap this video up, is that you making the decision to get locks is for you and do that decision based off of your needs because a lot of misconceptions that are out there are invalid and based off of insecurities and based off of social media influence which at this point is very toxic nowadays having natural hair is a test of self acceptance and what i can say is i didn't accept myself as much as I did now when I had loose natural hair versus how I do right now. Like my hair actually is a breather for me when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about certain styles when I go on vacation. I don't have to worry about paying $200 for braids that are gonna make my scalp itch for the next two weeks until I get it wet a couple of times. Like. When I had loose natural hair, I was worried about, oh my gosh, this twist out is not going to turn out how I want it to turn out. Oh my gosh, my hair is going to be dry the next day. Oh my gosh, um, these products aren't going to work for me like they work for that person. And I was always on this journey of finding the right product. I was always on this journey with how to, having to, trying to find ways to tame my hair that wasn't as stressful and wasn't as like hard labor versus now. Here I am today, I have a way that I can wear my natural hair, tame it, not do too much labor, do hairstyles that I know that are going to turn out the way I want them to turn out and they last for a long time. I feel more myself and when you feel more yourself and when you accept yourself more, that contributes to you building confidence. And I didn't really have that confidence when I had loose natural hair versus how I do now. But I just wanted to share because, you know, these are things that I've thought throughout this journey. Like, what if I never made this decision? I would not be where I am today and who I am today. I appreciate so much and I'm very grateful for me making that decision. And I just wanted to share because I don't, I don't think there's too many videos out about this, about the these thoughts that rotate around people's head, you know, when you're making these type of decisions. Everybody putting their own personal experiences in the comments and putting their personal opinions in the comments, keep doing that because everybody is reading those comments and relating to them and finding comfort in, into them and making choices based off of real perspective of how it is to really have locks in all forms. Feel free to share anything in the comments. I love to read you guys' comments. Other people that are watching this video love to read you guys' comments too. And I'll see you guys next time.